It's a happy problem, that's how I refer to it. Still, still, what, what can be done and what, what should be done? Sure. I probably won't take a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, the parking issue in Peoria Heights has been here for eons. Um, we did purchase a parking lot to help out with some of the parking. Um, people do have to park. I mean, they can't park in front of the restaurant they're going to. They have to park down a street and walk, which that's kind of one of the unique things that we have in the Heights. It's close-knit. It's not that far to walk. Um, have a nice meal. Go for a walk to your car, you know, walk some of it off. Um, but as far as the parking, I mean, there's just no, there's no other place that we could purchase at this time to help out with the parking. I mean, the parking is the parking. I mean, we've had problems with it for forever. You know. One Boy, I agree. That's, uh, you know, that's... That's a tough call because basically we'd be trying to create something out of nothing. Um, you know, first things that, that come to mind would be, wow, with the uh, TIF district and the Cohen's building, boy, how many millions of dollars would that cost to uh, turn that building maybe into a parking deck? And how full would it be? Would it be a revenue generator? Are there any other areas that might lend themselves to being suitable for maybe a, a two-story, three-story parking deck? And once again, is would that be something that we could generate revenue uh, for the village? For right now, I mean, there really aren't any any easy answers for that that don't involve uh, you know creating a capital project. And to be honest, spending money that we really just don't want to spend right now, you know, in 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 terms of that, you know, I mean. Uh, the, the restaurants, the Prospect Road is full, uh, the side streets are full. Um, you know, I, uh, obviously we've got additional parking in the lot uh, next to the Smith Drug Building and also uh, the Heights Bank uh, parking area and the lot behind Carlson's as well. And, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be deterring, deterring business in the downtown area right now. Um, but, you know, with that said, I mean, any place could always use uh, additional parking. I mean, anyone that went to college knows that, you know, there's never enough parking, you know, wherever you're trying to go. But, uh, you know, that is something that we are concerned about. And if the opportunity presents itself and we can pick up additional parking at a great price, we'll go for it. And if not, you know, we're not going to put the village in a deficit situation uh, just to have a few more parking spots off of Prospect Road. <clears throat> As they mentioned, this is a um, sort of a good problem to have, but it's still a problem. I can't say that I uh, have a, an answer for you guys. Um, I know that the village has purchased a lot behind Car uh, Carlson's, and, and that sort of a, a, a helps a little bit. Um, I tell you, I've, I've walked up and down these streets since I was a kid, and I don't know where you can put the cars. Uh, <laughs> short of what Bart said of building a... Um, a uh, parking deck, which is not really a, a, a viable option for us at this time. I don't know what you're going to do. Um, th the one thing perhaps maybe we could do though is advertise some of these sort of hidden lots. Of course, I'm from the Heights, so I know that you can park behind Carlson's and I know that you can park um, in the lot behind Smith Drugs, but maybe some other people don't. So maybe we need some better signage and things like that. Those are sort of simple fixes to the problem. But in terms of the structural problem of, you know, everybody wanting to eat on Friday night in the Heights, um, I'm not really so sure what we're going to do about that, but I'm more than welcome to hear your opinions about it. So please come to our village board meetings and tell us. Thanks. It's like Cheryl said, uh, this has been an ongoing problem in the, in the Heights since we have Restaurant Row and um, we did try to alleviate some of the parking problems with purchasing the, the, the lot behind Carlson's. It might be a little bit better if that was lit. Um, people don't want to walk to it at night because it is dark. Um, maybe the chamber could work with some of the businesses and, and see if we and make it known that people can park in their parking lots at night. Like the, like the Heights Bank, I know it, and uh, but a lot of the people that are coming into the restaurants don't know that it's there. So I would revert this back to the chamber and let them figure out which places they can they can um, find for the people to park. I 
I'll tell you what, I was actually hoping that question wouldn't come up tonight. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, because, uh, you know, it, it, and we've all, you know, thought about this. I know you, you all have thought about this, but what can be done? But, you know, I mean, there's so many answers. It's, I, I mean, I thought about the answer of a, a, a building a deck and, and all that, but I think that would just take away from uh, the attractiveness of Peoria Heights. So we definitely don't want anything like that. At least I, I wouldn't want something like that. But it's it, just like everybody said, you know, it's, it's been an ongoing problem for years and years. And so that's, that's when you would have to come up with ideas. Anybody can come up with an idea. And whether, you know, two or three ideas come together as one, that's that's what it's about. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that either. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to Meredith, to Cheryl, to Bart, to Matt, to Andrea for running for office. Please show your appreciation. Remember to vote. If I could ask the two candidates for mayor, please come forward. Mark Allen have been fortunate to be mayor of Peoria Heights for the past eight years. I want to thank uh, H and Tanya and uh, Adam and the chamber for putting this on and thank you especially everyone who's attending tonight. The uh, three things that we need to focus on no matter who is the mayor and who's on the board is number one we've already talked about is revenue. Revenue is super important. The only way to do it is with business development. Business development needs to be done along War Memorial in the TIF district on the Heritage Square area, and also, if at all possible, by the grace of God, along 29. Down there, we, we're dealing with IDOT. IDOT is a four-letter word in Peoria Heights, so that's a problem. The other thing we need to do is continue uh, stabilizing our neighborhoods. Uh, we have a uh, number of housing that, uh, two-bedroom houses that we're hoping to attract the people who are trying to downsize, people who are starting out, but you know how things are in the Peoria area is that those days in the 50s and the 60s where people uh, were looking to buy a two-bedroom house to fix it up and then to move on to a three-bedroom house and then move on to a four-bedroom house. Today in the Peoria area, you can buy a four-bedroom house. People who uh, have both spouses working, it's a very viable thing to do almost right away. And they have their big yard and everything. So we're hoping to make Peoria Heights exciting enough. And now I'll make that the third thing is we've got to continue making Peoria Heights fun to live in a destination because that is where we'll bring people in who want to live here, who want to maintain their properties. The uh, trail is big on this. We're going to hopefully attract people who are, who are empty nesters, who are uh, starting out, who th this type of uh, setup is out of the ordinary for Central Illinois. So those three things we have to continue working on. We have been working on them. It's been a tough economy, as everybody knows, but uh, whoever the mayor is, whoever the trustees are, it's imperative that we do all of those things and continue working hard to keep Peoria Heights going strong. Thank you. Well, Mayor, you said uh, about what I was going to say there. The top three things that I, that I look at is the economic development. Uh, for a lot of you uh, that maybe have seen on TV, you've heard Focus Forward Central Illinois. I happen to be uh, on that committee, one of those committees here. There's exciting things uh, going on economically. The uh, charge of a thousand more volunteers trying to re 
re recharge economic develop development in a five county region. Uh, economic development, I think, is, is one of the top. Uh, my second one would be the housing, housing market here, taking a look at what we can do in the housing market. Uh, in, in my talks here over the last several weeks, I've had young families say I'm looking to expand uh, into a larger home. Our bedroom, our homes here in the community are t usually a two bedroom home. They want to stay in the community. Um, is there things that can be done to entice those people to stay? I think there is. And the third thing is, um, I would like to see and work on a strategic plan vision document for the community. I think we need to also look at our seniors. That's another uh, issue that uh, uh, I've had seniors uh, bring up to me. I'd like to really stay in my community. I can still get around, but I would like to live in a, in, in a center and stay with the community. Well, that's kind of dear to my heart because I worked 40 plus years in construction as a carpenter. So, uh, about four or five years ago, Tri County Regional Planning Commission, which I happen to be on the commission, uh, the village of Peoria Heights received a $15,000 grant uh, to study and develop a vision plan for neighborhood school impact. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you can find that document on the website, the vision plan, but one of the things, uh, we had a lot of discussion over many, many meetings. Uh, there was ideas thrown out. One idea that I thought was unique came from Superintendent Bergia. For those looking to construct possibly a new home or major renovation of an existing home. He discussed it at the meeting and said, I will take a look at it, put the pencil to the paper, and take it back to the school board for discussion. Thought was maybe a five-year property tax abatement at a certain percentage to entice people to build new homes or to spend the major money to renovate one of these older homes. Uh, I think some, something is interesting is that 62% of our housing stock at housing stock was built prior to 1959 in the community. And as the trustees stated, a majority of them are best homes on slab, two bedroom houses. Major cost in additions and renovation. I can testify to that. Um, that that's one area. I, I think it's open to collaboration, open discussion. What can we do to improve the housing stock? Uh, I think it uh, would be through a strategic plan with a vision to have open discussion and involve the community in that discussion. Yeah, I think, uh, like Mr. Gorman pointed out, that a, an abatement of one type or another would be wonderful. And of course, we would have to have the schools join in with us because they get about 60% of the uh, property taxes in the area, but I think that would be a wonderful thing. I wish that the federal government was in better position to give more grants to uh, areas to offer oh, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, whatever it is to help fix up homes. I think what Ridgewood's Township does is wonderful in terms of the volunteer spirit in uh, helping people rehab homes, and obviously we do need more of that, and I'd be more than happy to pursue that from a uh, village standpoint. But the, the main thing is we, we have to show uh, the, the community that we're all in this together. We have to uh, help each other as best we can. And the, uh, the housing, we're trying to attract people, again, trying to, who are downsizing, up-and-comers, make Peoria Heights exciting, and they'll want to move here, hopefully, and take some of these homes that are extremely uh, reasonable to purchase and fix them up. So I think we're in a good position. We need the economy to turn around, but we also need to all work together, and I think that's what Mr. Gorman alluded to. Thank you. If you want to stay up. Oh. Okay. We'll go first on this one. <laughs> With tax revenue payments from the state of Illinois so unstable, how would you ensure the village maintains its level of service? 
Okay, thank you. Don, this is your question here, I think. Um, we, I believe, have turned the corner to a degree on the, um, the terror that has been wrought on communities in terms of money from the state. I think our uh, cost for the ambulance service has stabilized. We've made our final payment on the police department building, which was $500,000 over five years. So our final payment of $100,000 was just made. Um, hate to say it, but we're gonna be making some revenue. Well, I guess not hate to say it, but we'll be making it off of the, the uh, video poker. Could be worth seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year to the village. Uh, you, you hate to make it that way, but that's the nature of the beast today. And uh, we, we also think that there's some positive outgrowth in uh, interest for the War Memorial properties in particular. We need a governor who will step up and, and help us out with Route 29, but uh, really the only way to maintain the services we have in Peoria Heights, which really are exceptional for the size of the community, is to work to increase revenue. And that can only be done with bringing new business in. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. We talk to umpteen people. If you had about a half an hour, I could list them all. But we, we're hoping that we've turned the corner and that the economy will help these people make the, uh, get the loans they need to build new businesses in Peoria Heights. Thank you. I think the uh, t trustees had kind of mentioned that earlier with each department head looking at and, and being from the, sc and the school board and that, do we see that uh, unsta uh, instability in, in the uh, state aid and the funding uh, there. Uh, taking a look at that and really taking a hard look internally uh, at where uh, y you see maybe the revenue losses, try to project or plan for them. Uh, just overall um, continue on with the economic development. I think that's the key to maintaining the stability um, within the community and the uncertainty on, on a state level here with the funds. Uh, with the replacement tax, nobody knows what's going to happen there. It, it's, it's devastating to all the public bodies. Uh, might be some other cuts here. The state's looking at uh, some more uh, cuts to municipalities. I've heard uh, from the city of West Peoria, they're looking at about a $78,000 cut um, with the current uh, uh, plans here in our state legislature. So economic development is key to keep the stability within the village. No, that's all right. I would really have to take a look at, at, at that in creating the corner, corridor there. Um, a lot is, is governed by IDOT and what can go in down there. Uh, um, dealing with IDOT, I just recently last month was in a meeting with Secretary of Transportation Ann Snyder. I happen to currently be on the Board of Directors for the Eastern Bypass as Vice President. Uh, we met there to discuss the Eastern Bypass corridor along with the possible new bridge just north up by uh, Route 6. Uh, looking at that, uh, I think that project, if it ever comes about, is going to open up economic opportunities for this community. Um, because anywhere where new infrastructure is placed, especially of this magnitude, within five to ten years out from that infrastructure, it's business, homes and families. Um, I, I, I really would uh, really want to sit down and, and try to analyze that, see what, see what the pros are, what the cons are, and what the potholes are uh, uh, to really make a, a determination there. Um, a lot of it's in floodplain, that has to be addressed. Uh, knowing that there are some issues in, in the county there, serving on the County Zoning Board of Appeals, we had many cases pertaining to those issues with new homes or businesses locating in floodplain area. 
and the restrictions that pertain to those. There is absolutely no reason why Galena Road in Peoria Heights cannot mirror Route 29 in Chillicothe. Inexcusable. And the uh, reason why it's been kept this way is basically to allow traffic to move quickly and freely from uh, Caterpillar Mossville to south of the area. It's the only explanation that makes any sense why they completely ignore us. Everything west of Galena Road is not in the floodplain. It's all buildable. There are about three or four empty pockets there right now, unused, that could uh, support gas stations, restaurants, uh, convenience stores. We've had interest from Casey's. We've had interest from uh, two or three other gas stations who said we would love to locate along Galena Road in Peoria Heights, but the traffic's too fast and you don't have a stop and go light. It's very, it's very clear. And what we're losing there is that we, we figure that about a, uh, a good gas station with a convenience store is costing us about $100,000 of revenue a year. So, and it's also a safety factor. We have Galena Park Terrace down there along with OSF um, Nursing Home. We have people coming out of there who are trying to drive in their 70s and 80s, trying to pull out, and it, for four or five hours of the day, they can't pull out safely. They ha a lot of people move their schedules around based on when Mossville traffic comes through. Uh, you know how crazy I went in the uh, doggone newspapers trying to bring something to be done along there. But uh, they, they're completely ignoring Peoria Heights. Uh, IDOT is, uh, for whatever reason, I think it's Caterpillar Mossville, it, and the only thing I was told was that the governor could make that decision to go over and above what IDOT has decided. We need to get a governor in there who will take on the hard task and get it done. Uh, the governor we have in there now had, uh, I've completed a letter to him. We had uh, uh, petitions sent in. All he did was forward it on to the IDOT office in, in Peoria, so it went nowhere. So uh, we need to have that. I, it's quite clear for safety and for business development. Once again, I'll go back to the Eastern Bypass, and Chairman Mike Hendrickson, who is uh, an employee of Caterpillar, and I had a, a long discussion over this and that, uh, uh, this uh, Route 29. Over 3,000 vehicle trips are made from the Mossville plant to get across the river. That's either going to Washington, Metamora, or Germantown. I view this if this project, then that's why we're pushing for this project, that would eliminate the heavy traffic on Route 29 with the 3,000 trips going across the river with the bridge being located up at uh, around Route 6 somewhere, temper up. Just it's temporary on the location that IDOT has indicated to us. So I see that as coming. How soon? It could be seven years down the road before this project would even start. but. Traffic, yes, that is a problem. To eliminate 3,000 vehicle trips per day, I think would help in IDOT looking towards the village and say, and approaching IDOT that we wanna develop this down here along 29. The uh, 3,000 trips, is, it makes the uh, trip more valuable. You lose that much traffic, then the desire for having businesses along Galena Road goes down a little bit. And I, I think uh, Mr. Gorman's being very optimistic about seven years. I, I, from what I've read and, and getting all the land and getting all this done, oh my God, if it happens within 15, 20 years in my lifetime, I might be surprised. And also the connection in Mossville is approximately about six, seven miles uh, north of Peoria Heights. I hope it would spread that far, but in the end, whether it's the Eastern Bypass or whatever, we need traffic slowed down there to 35 miles per hour, and we need one or two traffic signal lights to bring the business in, period. We have the TIFFIN plan, hasn't worked as well as I would have hoped, but the, by the time we got it in, the economy kind of went into the tank. 
So we're hoping as the economy slowly rebounds that we're getting some interest and possibly put uh, residential along with some commercial development. It's too big of a property to do just commercial. We'd love to have it, but it's just too big. So a, mi a mixed use would be ideal to have uh, some commercial, have some residential, and uh, have some uh, benefit for the community, whether it be a running track, indoor uh, workout area, basketball courts, something like that. Unfortunately for the village, we just don't have the deep enough pockets to purchase the property and, and uh, get it fixed up ourselves. We're depending upon uh, people to come up with the money on their own. It's a huge project. Could cost 20 to $50 million to do it right. So we're, we're seeing a little bit more interest right now, and uh, all we can do is do what we can to uh, help whatever business. Like I said, we, we don't, we're not like Peoria or East Peoria. We don't have the deep pockets or the bonding power to really help them out as much as I'd like. But uh, whatever we can do to grease the wheels, we'll be more than happy to do. I think the mayor, you've hit on all of it too. I think it uh, has many possibilities. Uh, a lot of uses there, uh, whether for residential, seniors, uh, businesses. Uh, it, it has has potential uh, for use, but getting those individuals, those developers, those wanting to come in here and invest that amount of money, that's difficult to do. That very difficult to do. So you know, you kind of have to reach out in the network uh, and. Uh, talk to people regionally and see what's done. I know there's some uh, innovative things going on in the city of Peoria right now in, in revitalizing uh, one selected uh, neighborhood. A company called Lisk has come into the area. Uh, they have brought a lot of resources into the area. That's something to, uh, maybe to take a look at uh, in exploring here in this community uh, with the resources they have available to them. That was uh, the position on the recycling program. I think it's great. I think more people need to do it. I tell you, uh, uh, since I've uh, uh, been recycling right from the start there, instead of four garbage cans, five maybe, while my boys were at home, uh, I'm down to one can and uh, one recycling can. That needs to continue. And I, and I think the next step in talking to people who are heavily involved in recycling, you, you need to look at, at the businesses. Where can we start with businesses to help in this issue of recycling? Take a look. It has been effective. Peoria County is looking at the landfill due to the uh, loss of revenue, because that's generated on the trash that is dumped at the landfill site. So it, it is working. I support it 100 percent. 